For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Shannon Derehove. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me to discuss the rights of foreign migrants in South Africa. Welcome, Professor. Thanks a lot. In your column, you paint a picture of lawlessness in the way foreign uh, migrants from Asia and especially Africa were treated. Is this not exaggerated? Well, I don't think it's exaggerated because uh, it seems to me that although there is a right to take some action against undocumented migrants, people who don't have papers, who don't have the right to be here, people who do have papers also experience a lot of harassment. Mm -hmm. From the time you cross the border uh, into a range of aspects of South African life, one has this sense that uh, people from other countries are stopped, they're harassed, they, if your papers are torn up by a policeman, what do you do? Mm. You know, you, uh, you don't have the records, you've presumably left the records with home affairs. How do you set about it? You've probably got to get a statement at the police station. Um, if, for example, uh, you are, you, you, if you are um, a person without papers, a lot of um, uh, authorities as well as businesses take advantage of this because they know that a person who just wants to stay in the country will do just about anything to stay in the country. So you have a demand for sex or you have a situation where Someone is employed at much lower rates than they would normally play. And the end of the month, you hear this um, argument where the person is dismissed and uh, they ask to be paid and the person just refuses. Now, that migrant worker who hasn't got papers can't go to the police station because he or she will be arrested. Mm. So there's a lot of things that are happening apart from what we read about in recent weeks, which is very dramatic attacks on foreign people. I think we have to draw distinction between the various actors. On the one hand, you have businesses who are in competition with the foreign migrants. Mm -hmm. The foreign migrants seem to have uh, ways of doing business that is more uh, convenient for the township dwellers. They are open long before they go to work, mm -hmm. consequently, uh, and they stay open long hours, the whole family works. They've got a very, very strong reason to succeed because they've left their country of birth, they have to support their family, and they have to send money back home. Now, the South Africans uh, are not inclined to work as, as long hours as that, understandably, but also the foreign migrants end into sort of buying cooperatives. So they buy in bulk and they're able to sell goods at a lower rate. Mm. And they sell, for example, they sell a single, single cigarette. And they don't only sell packets. So they do a lot of things. They give credit. They do a lot of things that the South African migrants don't do. Not necessarily because they've got money, but because they have ways of working together. Mm -hmm. And when the South African compet competitive shop owners uh, instigate attacks, uh, we've seen uh, that they allege various things about the um, foreign shop owners. Some may be true, some may not be true, but they're not allowed to simply go and attack these shops. Then these shops are looted. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we must draw a distinction between the people who loot. They haven't planned the attack necessarily. Usually, the looting follows something else, and goods are on the ground. Like, for example, Sometimes after a protest march, shops are damaged, and then all sorts of people have got nothing to do with the march, just loot. Well, I saw the other day in Albertina Sisulu Road how, I think it 
think beer had dropped on the ground. There were people running there with plastic bags, picking it up. Because people are very, very poor. There are lots of people living in dire poverty. And I think I've said this before, the, there's this well-known saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But absolute powerlessness also leads people very often to conduct themselves in a manner where they, which they would not necessarily have done if uh, they had dignity, if they had uh, a right to exist like uh, they ought to have. Mm. Now, you relate the treatment of foreigners to the concept of freedom that you argue motivated South Africans. Can you elaborate on this? Yes, you know, if you go to the origins of liberty in South Africa, it's based uh, in the Cape province, on what is called the liberal Cape tradition of a non-racial franchise. There are various flaws with that, but when African nationalism, the early stirrings developed, it drew on Christianity and Victorian liberalism. Now both of these stressed on a stressed a notion of universalism, that all of God's creatures should be treated with dignity and should have e ultimately have equal rights. They didn't always believe that Africans were what they called civilized and they had to uh, catch up with the white person, but people who had these um, qualifications, educational qualifications, sometimes property qualifications, were entitled to vote. So from very early on, what motivated um, African, proto-African nationalism, prelude to African nationalism, was a universalist thing. There was this other trend to drive the whites into the sea, and the earliest emanation of Africanism, maybe the Ethiopian churches, the breakaways from the Methodists and other churches. But even those Africanist churches were not generally anti-white, and many of them were involved in the formation of the ANC, which was uh, in its aspiration for a universal, un undivided South Africa. Mm. Later, you also had the Garveyites and the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, which were Africanist. Some of them sometimes said, drive the whites into the sea. But the ANC was involved in those. Later, when communism came on the scene, now Marxism is also universalist. Mm -hmm. It is not something that just says workers' rights in Britain or something like that. So this notion of universal rights and in freedom being indivisible has been a part of South African liberation history, part of South African democratic history, which stretches from liberals through to communists. It is part of the Freedom Charter. It's part of the Constitution. Also, if you read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, when they talk about dignity, when they talk about right to bodily integrity. When they talk about all these freedoms, they say these are universally applicable. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, they called it the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So in the case of the attacks on migrants, we can see this as an injustice. Mm -hmm. But we can also see it as an attack on our freedom on the notion of freedom for which we fought. We did not fight only that South Africans should be free. We fought so that any person who walks on the earth, which is the territory of South Africa, will be free from victimization. In Britain, you can't just go to someone in the street and give them a club, uh, whether they come from this place or that place. That is the law. Mm -hmm. There are some things that only South Africans can have as rights in this country. But in general, freedom is indivisible. And that's also one of the reasons why people oppose the powers which are given to traditional leaders. 
they believe that what they're doing is creating a dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. Some people who fall under the common law and some people will fall under the law, which they call customary law, but it's not really customary law, uh, which is administered by chiefs. So when we oppose xenophobic attacks, it's very important that we understand that we are also fighting for ourselves, for our own freedom. Because mm -hmm. as Pastor Nimolo said, one day they came for the Jews. I said nothing because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the communists. I didn't say anything because I wasn't a communist. When they came for me, there was no one to say anything. Mm -hmm. No one left to say anything. Now we need to understand. Now they're taking the migrants. We already know they sometimes ta attack Shangans. Next it will be other people. Mm -hmm. So we must safeguard our liberty. Well, thank you for your insights. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Crema Media's policy about the rights of foreign migrants in South Africa.